History of Neurology and Neurosurgery, Wikipedia Audio The study of neurology and neurosurgery dates back to prehistoric times, but the academic disciplines did not begin until the 16th century. From an observational science they developed a systematic way of approaching the nervous system and possible interventions in neurological disease. The Incas appear to have practiced a procedure known as trepanation since the Late Stone Age, a method that is compared to similar techniques used today. These procedures were mostly performed on combatants, with evidence from skeletal remains revealing that the earliest methods usually resulted in death. However, by the 1400s, Incas proved to be skilled surgeons, as survival rates rose to about 90%, infection rates following the procedure were low and evidence was found showing that some individuals survived the surgery on multiple occasions. Incan surgeons learned to avoid areas of the head that would cause injury, using a scraping method on the skull that would cause less trauma. They also likely used medicinal herbs of the time such as coca and alcohol for pain while balsam and saponin would be employed for antibiotic purposes. An ancient Egyptian treatise concerning trauma surgery, the Edwin Smith Papyrus, contains descriptions and suggests treatments for various injuries, including some of neurological nature. Specifically, there are descriptions of the meninges, the external surface of the brain, the cerebrospinal fluid and the intracranial pulsations. Not only are these neurological features mentioned, but it is also noticed that some bodily functions can be impaired by brain injuries or injuries to the cervical spine. There are many other examples of observations of neurological phenomena throughout history. The Sumerians illustrated paraplegia caused by physical trauma in a bas relief of a lion with an arrow in its back. Neurological disorders not caused by physical disorder were also investigated. For example, in the medicine of the Vedic period of ancient India, the Ayurvedic text Sharika Samhita discusses epilepsy, with a discussion of both symptoms and of possible treatments. Early History Slightly later, the ancient Greek physician Hippocrates was convinced that epilepsy has a natural cause, not a sacred one. The ancient Greeks also dissected the nervous system. For example, Aristotle describes the meninges and also distinguishes between the cerebrum and the cerebellum. Slightly later, in Rome, Galen performed many dissections of the nervous system in a variety of species, including the ape. One particular discovery he made was of the importance of the recurrent laryngeal nerves. Originally, he cut through them accidentally while performing an experiment on the nerves that control breathing by vivisection of a strapped-down, squealing pig. The pig immediately stopped squealing but continued struggling. Galen then performed the same experiment on a variety of animals, including dogs, goats, bears, lions, cows and monkeys, finding similar results each time. Finally, to publicize this new result, Galen demonstrated the experiment on a pair of pigs to a large audience in Rome, telling them, there is a hair-like pair in the muscles of the larynx on both left and right, which if ligated or cut render the animal speechless without damaging either its life or functional activity. With surgery, Hua Tuo was an ancient Chinese physician and surgical pioneer who is said to have performed neurosurgical procedures. In Al-Andalus from 936 to 1013 AD, Alzarai evaluated patients and performed surgical treatments of head injuries, skull fractures, spinal injuries, hydrocephalus, subdural effusions and headache. Concurrently in Persia, Avicenna also presented detailed knowledge about skull fractures and their surgical treatments.
In 1549, N. L. Jason Pratensis published the first neurology book De Cerebri Morbus. This book was devoted to neurological diseases, and discussed symptoms, as well as ideas from Galen and other Greek, Roman, and Arabic authors. Thomas Willis in 1664, published his Anatomy of the Brain, followed by Cerebral Pathology in 1667. He removed the brain from the cranium, and was able to describe it more clearly, setting forth the circle of Willis the circle of vessels that enables arterial supply of the brain. He had some notions as to brain function, including a vague idea as to localization and reflexes, and described epilepsy, apoplexy, and paralysis. As already mentioned, he was the first to use the word neurology. A beginning of the understanding of disease came with the first morbid anatomists, morbid anatomical illustration, and the development of effective color printing. Matthew Bailey and Jean Kruvelher illustrated the lesions in stroke, in 1799 and 1829 respectively. Only when cells were identified microscopically was it possible to progress beyond the crudest anatomical notion. J. E. Porcanier in 1837 gave the first description of neurons, indeed a very early description of cells of any kind. Later Golgi and Kajal stained the ramifying branches of nerve cells, these could only touch, or synapse. The brain now had demonstrated form, without localized function. The famous philosopher René Descartes speculated that every activity of an animal was a necessary reaction to some external stimulus, the connection between the stimulus and the response was made through a definite nervous path. Luigi Galvani demonstrated that electrical stimulation of nerve produced muscle contraction, and the competing work of Charles Bell and Franz Wamagendi led to the view that the ventral horns of the spinal cord were motor and the dorsal horns sensory. A hemiplegic patient who could not speak led Paul Broca to the view that functions in the cerebral cortex were anatomically localized. Ivan Pavlov realized as his dogs dribbled that a simple reflex could be modified by higher brain functions. These neurological ideas were coordinated and integrated by the neurophysiologist Charles Scott Sherrington. The first physicians to devote entirely to neurology were Moritz Heinrich Romberg, William A. Hammond, Duchenne de Boulogne, Jean Martin Charcot, and John Hugh Lings Jackson. Physicians could use the ideas of neurology in practice only if they developed proper tools and procedures for clinical investigation. This happened step by step in the 19th century tendon hammer, ophthalmoscope, pin and tuning fork, syringe and lumbar puncture. X-rays, the electroencephalography, angiography, and CAT scans were to follow. The clinical neurologists correlated their findings after death with those of the neuropathologist. The best known was W.R. Gowers who owned a major text in two volumes, of a cerebrospinal tract. By the end of the 19th century, the connection was established between stroke and hemiplegia, between trauma and paraplegia between the spirochete and the paralyzed demency people who filled the mental hospitals. The first chemotherapeutic cure of a serious infection was salversan for syphilis, followed by the induction of fever in neurosyphilis. The treatment of neurosyphilis became highly effective when antibiotics were introduced. There was not much advancement in neurosurgery until late 19th early 20th century when electrodes were placed on the brain and superficial tumors were removed. Neurosurgery, or the premeditated incision into the head for pain relief, has been around for thousands of years, 
but notable advancements in neurosurgery have only come within the last hundred years. History of Electrodes in the Brain In 1878 Richard Cotone discovered that electrical signals transmitted through an animal's brain. In 1950 Dr. José Delgado invented the first electrode that was implanted in an animal's brain, using it to make it run and change direction. In 1972 the cochlear implant, a neurological prosthetic that allowed deaf people to hear was marketed for commercial use. In 1998 researcher Philip Kennedy implanted the first brain-computer interface into a human subject. Ancient History of Tumor Removal in 1879, after locating it viaduct neurological signs alone, Scottish surgeon William Maswan performed the first successful brain tumor removal. On November 25, 1884 after English physician Alexander Hughes Bennett used Maswan's technique to locate it, English surgeon Rickman Godley performed the first primary brain tumor removal which differs from Maeswan's operation in that Bennett operated on the exposed brain, whereas Maeswan operated outside of the brain proper via trepanation. Three years later, Victor Horsley was the first physician to remove a spinal tumor. On March 16, 1907 Austrian surgeon Hermann Schulhofer became the first to successfully remove a pituitary tumor. American surgeon Harvey Cushing successfully removed a pituitary adenoma from an acromegalic in 1909. Treating endocrine hyperfunction by neurosurgery was a major neurological landmark. Igas Moniz in Portugal developed a procedure of leukotomy to treat severe psychiatric disorders. Though it is often said that the development of lobotomy was inspired by the case of Phineas Gage, a railroad worker who had an iron bar driven through his left frontal lobe in 1848, the evidence is against this. The main advancements in neurosurgery came about as a result of highly crafted tools. Modern neurosurgical tools, or instruments, include chisels, curettes, dissectors, distractors, elevators, forceps, hooks, impactors, probes, suction tubes, power tools, and robots. Most of these modern tools, like chisels, elevators, forceps, hooks, impactors, and probes, have been in medical practice for a relatively long time. The main difference of these tools, pre- and post-advancement in neurosurgery, were the precision in which they were crafted. These tools are crafted with edges that are within a millimeter of desired accuracy. Other tools such as handheld power saws and robots have only recently been commonly used inside of a neurological operating room. Anatomy and Physiology Microscopy Diagnostics Neurosurgery Modern Modern Surgical Instruments Bibliography